As we gather in this place, let us turn our hearts towards God, our refuge, and our strength. And this is In The Moment. I'm your host, Reverend Ricky Allen Jr. Thanking you as always on this lovely day the Lord has made and wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I just pray that the Lord Jesus Christ, as always, is out front leading the way so that you can smile and have a better day. And I'm having a fantastic day because it's September 14th and this is my birthday. People, God is good all the time and all the time God is good. I'm blessed to see year 47 and I've seen so many things God has done in my life and I hope that you have been able to experience life with me through this podcast, through the show, through the ministry God has uh, put in my life to do for his work and his will. And I'm just, I'm thankful. And a lot of people have asked, so what, what do you want? I mean, what, what do you want for your birthday? I just want peace and enjoy my family and just take it all in. You know, <laughs> there are a lot of people in my peer group that don't make it to this point in time. And that's unfortunate. But so I thank God every day for getting up. I really do. I've had a lot of things that have happened in my life. I've shared many of those things with you and you've seen what God can do just through what he's done with me. So I thank God for you. And if you really want to give me a great birthday gift, if you really, really want to do this, subscribe to our Spotify podcast. We're trying to build up this podcast to get to at least 100 followers by the end of the year. And with your help, we can do that. So if you have Spotify, and you want to help for those who watch on Roku, uh, go to your Spotify app, find us and hey, follow us on there. And for those who are on Spotify already listening to us, tell a friend, you know, that that is what you can do to um, make my heart happy <laughs> on my birthday. Besides listening, of course, I mean, of course, that's the biggest thing. So yeah, uh, so with that being said, let's get started. Let's, let's get started. Enough with the shameless plug. Our scripture reading comes from Psalm 16, eight through nine, Psalm 16, eight through nine, which reads, I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. And I know there are many people out there that need some good old fashioned rest. That is, uh, you're going to wake up refreshed and begin that next day that the Lord has given you. And that begins with prayer. And maybe you need prayer right now. Maybe you desire prayer. And we have a site for that, get-prayer.com, get-prayer.com. Uh, you can fill it out. We can put you on our prayer list. And we would love to support you in your time of need. With that being said, let us pray. Lord Jesus, we come before you today acknowledging that life can sometimes weigh hard on our hearts but we turn our gaze to you, the one who lifts our burdens and fills us with hope. Your word says in Philippians 4, 8, uh, to fix our thoughts on what is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. Lord, guide our minds to live in these things, turning away from the negativity and embracing the peace and the joy that comes from your presence. Lord, I confess, we confess that our thoughts often drift away from that towards fear and worry and the discouragement. But we ask you to renew our minds, align our hearts with your truth. Remind us, Lord, that you are always at work orchestrating every detail of our lives for good, as you promised in Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Help us to trust in this promise. To see your hand in every situation, good or bad, and to remain steadfast in our faith, knowing that you are shaping us into the people you have called us to be. Father, let our words and actions reflect the joy of knowing you. Make us vessels of encouragement, spreading your light and hope wherever you go, wherever we go. When the world around us feels heavy and negative and filled with 
doubt and despair. Help us stand firm in the assurances of your promises. Remembering in Isaiah 26, 3, you will keep, you will keep in perfect peace with those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Keep our minds steadfast, founded in your truth, and may our lives be a walking testimony to a world that has indeed lost its way. But I thank God through Christ, our Father, that there's always a remnant of God's people. So nothing is lost completely, and there's always a light in the darkness. These and all things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our topic today is the best is yet to come. Do you know that? Do you feel that? The best is yet to come. Regardless of what you're going through right now, regardless of what you went through, maybe as a child, teenager, young adult, regardless of what you think you might be going through in the future. You don't know. You don't know if you're getting up the next morning. The best is yet to come, and that comes from our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And our text today is Philippians 1, 6, which reads, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless the reading of your already blessed word. Help us understand why the best is yet to come, even when everything around us says there's nothing good coming no time soon. Help us look past those things and reach for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Do you think positive? Do you think positive? It's a question that many of us have to actually think about. If someone walked up to you right now and asked the question, what would the answer be? Would you remember God's promises? Are you going to remember how you proclaimed your faith in Jesus Christ? And if we're going to be honest, what we say will be determined by what we are going through at that moment or maybe just have just gone through or what we fear we're going to go through. Why? Because when we're asked this question, people are either going to go or are either going to hear your struggle or one word. Yes. I think positive is it's a very, I mean, if you are founded in the promises of God, then the answer is simple. Yes. But if you got a lot of stuff going on, I mean, we're human, things are going on, things are happening, sometimes not for the best. This might be a little longer for you to answer. And why is that? Because as I said before, we can talk about our pain all day because it's pain and it hurts. And again, that, that, that's, that's human. Don't think that's weird. Don't think that you're a bad Christian because you talk more about more and longer about your pain than you do your blessing. We all do it. Why? Because we're hurting. It hurts us physically, chest pains, migraines, don't want to eat at times, don't want to get up, and it hurts us spiritually. We begin to question the intentions of Christ, begin to wonder if God's plan has a bright spot in, in there anywhere, or is this all that there is? Thinking positive is such a big deal that there is a World Happiness Report. It was launched in 2012 to help evaluate happiness within countries to determine their social progress. And for the first time, the United States didn't break the top 20. Finland, Denmark, and Iceland rounded out the top three. The U.S. was ranked at 15, but now it's 23. The report says the country is experiencing what they call a loneliness epidemic, especially in the younger generations. Could it also be the unchecked violence in the country, not inspiring you to get out and interact? Could it be the passive destruction of babies and the active desire to do so? 
Could it be the identity crisis that these young people are having and some of our older people as well? You see, with Satan and his demons, it begins with capturing the mind. And then everything else comes with it. If he can get you to separate your mind from God, this, this is what you get. As of this year, the United States in a study from Pew Research finds that the religious unaffiliated, a group compromised of atheists, agnostic, and those who say the religion is nothing in particular, is now the greatest cohort in this country. They're more prevalent among the American adults than Catholics or evangelical Protestants, both in their mid 20% or so. It's hard enough trying to pay the bills, dealing with health issues, dealing with family issues, dealing with marriage issues, to deal just with being out here in society and not losing it on someone. It's so hard to be positive when you're lonely physically and spiritually, only to believe in something that you have no idea and no direction of what it is. These, my friends, are the religious nuns. Not N-U-N-S, but N-O-N-E-S for clarity. That's why I'm glad today for you because you know the truth of the saving grace of Jesus Christ and the truth sets us free from this world. And because of that, I can assure you the best is yet to come. Regardless of what you've gone through or going through, what you think you're going to go through, the best is yet to come because if you believe the way you say you do, you know God is sovereign. And because you know God is sovereign, you have hope. The Bible says in 1 John 5, 5, who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the son of God. So raise your hand wherever you are if you are a world overcomer today and know that the best is yet to come. But how do we know this though? God has directed our answer to be found in the first chapter of Philippians and we're going to focus on verse six, but to put this in its proper place through, let's get an overview of the first five verses. In verse one, Paul and Timothy greet the Philippians identifying themselves as servants of Christ and addressing the entire church, including the leaders. Then we see in verse 2, he wishes the Philippians grace and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3, he expresses his gratitude to God every time he remembers the Philippians. Verse 4, he prays for them with joy, reflecting a deep connection and encouragement he feels from their relationship. Verse 5, Paul is thankful for the Philippians' steadfast partnership in the gospel, which has been ongoing since the beginning of their relationship, which leads us back to verse six, where it reads, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So in other words, the best is yet to come. But how do we know this? Consider these thoughts today, wherever you are. The best is yet to come because we have faith that God's work through Christ Jesus, birth, death, and resurrection will provide divine direction with a divine conclusion, eternal life. This is a divine undertaking, undertaking by God through Jesus Christ with a guaranteed successful outcome. The Apostle Paul expresses this assurance in the words, being confident of this using language that leaves no room for doubt. He is referencing the Philippians undertaking of the gospel and because of what they've done, he is encouraging their faith by expressing his confidence in their faith and God's response. And this is the roadmap for the verse. This is where our faith has to be right here. This is where it has to be. I know you're confident, but are you this confident? Do you trust that God will produce a successful outcome in your life or have you already thrown in the towel on your faith at all completely? Never forget Hebrews 11:6. And without faith, 
It's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. If you have, if you're not seeking, you're sinking. Let me say that one more time for you. If you're not seeking, you're sinking. You're going to sink into depression with the world, anxiety with the world, panic and confusion with the world. But when I break open my Bible and when I digest the words as Eugene Peterson talks about in his book, Eat This Book, when I truly seek the Father, the rewards are vast and I can be at peace in my heart because I know, like you should know, the best is yet to come. God doesn't start stuff and not finish it. Instead, he is faithful and true, always following through on his promises. This assurance gives us hope and perseverance in our faith journey. The best is yet to come because you, my friend, are an unfinished masterpiece. You're not just tossed in the corner like a spring or fall project that you just did not get to and finished that year. God isn't finished with us yet and there is an end. So where works in progress is evidenced by the phrase, he who began a good work in you. Jesus Christ is a divine artist painting the picture of your life in the kingdom and how it's seen by the world inspiring others. If you, if you don't see yourself as an unfinished masterpiece, the Bible tells us how God told the prophet Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house. Uh, chapter 18, verse three, it says, so I went down to the potter's house and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hand, so the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as it seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me, and he said, Can I not do this with you, Israel, as this potter does, declares the Lord. Like clay in the hands of the potter, so are you in my hands, Israel. He's talking about Israel. He's talking about us. You are an unfinished masterpiece. You might look like a mess. You might feel like a mess, feel like nothing is coming together. But when I think about the potter's hands, like Jeremiah was shown in God's response about Israel, I know he shapes my life, your life, just as much in the same way. The best is just to come because God through Christ Jesus is still putting your picture together, forming you into his image that is both beautiful and useful to his kingdom. Our unfinished state is not a flaw, but a living promise of what it means to trust God. A living testimony of what God is, has, is, and is willing to do in your life. And a flower that you are planted in the roughest parts of this world. So how can I break that time down to you a little bit better and make you laugh for a moment? You are a rose with an attitude of a weed. You're beautiful, but you can grow anywhere. God has put soil and your surroundings won't stop you. You'll set root and it'll take the strength of 10 men to pull you up. Have you ever had one of those weeds in your yard or in your driveway? <laughs> because the scripture says he began a good work in you, which means no matter where you grew and where you're growing, the, the work inside of you began as good, whether you felt good, looked good or not, because just because you don't see it doesn't mean God didn't plant it there. And that, my friend, is where faith comes into play. Because when I think about what the Lord has done for me, I know it began with the good work that he put inside of me, even when I did not feel or see it. And the same goes for you. 
No matter where we are in our faith walk, we are growing and improving. God sees beyond our current limitations and failures. He is already seeing you as the finished work. And that's why Satan is trying to keep you down and out because he knows when you rise to the occasion and tell what God has done is doing and with the faith proclaiming what he will do in your life, he knows he's lost. Remember, the person we're destined to become. The work God through Christ is doing in us right now, as the verse states, he will carry it to completion. Take your imperfections and see them as opportunities for God's grace to shine even brighter as he continues his work in you as he does in me. I'm no different. And then finally, the best is yet to come because our journey has a glorious destination. After affirming that God will carry it on to completion, Paul adds the, the powerful phrase until the day of Christ Jesus. This is not emphasizing just God's commitment to see his work in us through the end, but also points us to a future reality that is both certain and glorious. The completion of God's work isn't just about personal growth or spiritual maturity here and now. It's about reaching the grand and final destination, the day of Christ Jesus. This phrase, until the day of Christ Jesus, serves as a reminder that our journey with God has a definitive endpoint, the return of Jesus Christ. When all things will be made new, this, is, this isn't just a vague hope. It's a promised event where everything God has worked in us will be fully realized and perfected. And this separates the believers from the cultural Christians. Who are the cultural Christians? They enjoy our small groups. They enjoy our coffee. They enjoy our donuts. They enjoy our trips to, um, to different countries to help people. They're very functional in nature because they believe their works are going to get them to heaven and not believing in Jesus Christ. So in their confusion through understanding the culture of being a Christian, they call that Christianity. That is incorrect. A Christian is one who follows Jesus Christ and believes and has submitted to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And because they have done this in response to their faith in Jesus Christ, not works, their works are going to reflect their faith. And it's not the other way around. You can't get to heaven by just being a good person. I can't say it enough. I just talked to someone a couple of weeks ago. Well, I'm a good person. That's great. Good people still go to hell because they do not have the connection. And that is the, sum, the surrender submission of Jesus Christ in their life. They have not given their lives to Christ. They have not surrendered all. They have not experienced this absolute joyful surrender of their life to Christ. And so they blend in amongst us, calling themselves Christians. When they're not, they're people who enjoy what we do and how we do it. They like the culture, but do not know Christ. That's where our work begins. The destination that they think they're going to, we know we're going to. This destination shapes our perspective on our current struggles and growth. It reminds us that no matter how challenging the process may feel now, it all leads to a future where we are completely transformed and united with Christ in his glory. The mention of the day of Christ Jesus assures us that our efforts are not in vain. And our faith journey has a purpose and it has a victorious conclusion. Every trial, every growth spurt, every step of faith is moving us closer to that ultimate day. It encourages us to keep pressing on, knowing that our faith is leading to a moment of incomparable glory. 
Until then, we can rest in the confidence that God is tirelessly working in us, ensuring that his good work will reach its full and beautiful completion. So, we can live with hope and anticipation, knowing that the best is yet to come, because our journey doesn't just have a good start, but it has a glorious finish line, the day of Jesus Christ. And maybe you're out there and you don't know the Lord, but you want to know the Lord and you just don't have nobody to talk to. I want you to go to our website, get-prayer.com, submit a prayer request, explain to us what's going on, and let us come alongside you and pray with you. Let us help you find a church home in your area so that you can get plugged in with some believers that can help you on your on your walk and your beginnings in understanding who Christ is. And if you're out there and maybe you don't see another tomorrow coming for you and you're at that point, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, I want to lift you up and I want you to stay encouraged. I want you to know that you are seen and you are heard. I want you to know that we love you. If you've never heard it, I know childhood was rough. I know your situation was rough. I totally get all that. But guess what though? Let me tell you about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Keep tuning in, keep listening, but don't give up. The best is yet to come. Until next time, God willing, may you be blessed. May we Pray for each other as we go about this thing called life. And God willing, we will see you next week. You take care.